he's a good, good father. Amen. He's perfect in all of his ways. I agree with Marty. Sometimes when we didn't have the best dad, it's hard to understand. A guy, a, a guy that is a good father that never goes back on his word. A father that never breaks his promises. A father who loves us unconditionally. A father with, that disciplines us in love. And when he says that it hurts me more than it hurts you, he really means it. We're so grateful that we serve a good, good father. And it's in his nature to be good. Because that's just who he is. And as we learned before, we were created to be loved by him. Let's pray. God, we come and we're so grateful that you're a good father. God, we come to give you praise in advance. For we know that it is already done. We're grateful for the fact that, just like the song says, we know that Jesus will. For he's already done it for us. He was willing to give his life on the cross that we might have life. And so we're so grateful. Now, God, we come thanking you for daddies. Uh, God, not all biological, some, God, that you just sent children their way. You sent folks for them to pour into, and we're so grateful. But more than that, God, we're grateful for a good, good father who's left us with his word. And so, God, we ask right now that you would bless us that we might have ears to hear, that we might have a heart to receive and a will to do. We just thank you right now for you are perfect in all your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Oh, one day we're going to run around the building just excited about what God has done. Just, just think about this real quick. This is for free. And I'm talking to y'all who, you know, you, you really connected. Um, think about when you have had that personal praise party. You know, when you just, you just... It just hits you what God has done in your life. You know, you may have been in your car. You may have been in the office. You may have just been in the house. And you just lost your mind with praise. The tears are flowing. Your hands are lifted up. Amen. Listen, God deserved that all the time. Not, not just when you think, think about what, what he's done, but he deserves that kind of praise all the time. Amen. Amen. Well, again, happy Father's Day to the daddies. Amen. Uh, thank you, Alicia, for that video. Dad Joe, we just, I guess we just corny, huh? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> she gave me that joke. I want to fight. I mean, the women got a, 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 a sophisticated video, heart tear jerking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we got jokes. <laughs> you know, got us in. Obama dad, dad jeans, amen, jokes. <laughs> See, listen, it's a challenge. It's challenging being a father. Uh, it is not new. It, it, it is, and it's not a comparison to the challenges mothers face. Not a comparison, amen? But when it comes to fatherhood, we have to face the fact that society has diminished the value and the role and the impact of the father on the family. Yes. A, psychological, a psycholo psychology today article on the greatest challenges of fatherhood gives us some insight. You heard Marty give some stats. There, there's some insights. It says here, we're, we're all familiar with the gratitude given to mom by athletes and celebrities as they receive awards and accolades. Many of you remember when, when Kevin Durant uh, uh, brought the audience to their feet and brought some to tears with the tribute to his mom when he acknowledged that she was the real MVP. Right. See, uh, on average, more people celebrate Mother's Day than Father's Day and spend more for gifts for mom than for dad. I'm going somewhere. Don't, don't get all, you know tense yet. Amen. This imbalance raises questions about the role and significance 
of the father in parenting. Listen, uh, let, let, let me share this. Uh, uh, give a case in point. Now, now my wife it was upset because every Father's Day, that since we, we've had a church, every Father's Day, and, and ever since Father's Day been going on, um, I always say, you know, mothers, we pull out all the stops. You know, y'all, y'all eat good, amen. Y'all, we 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 better have a gift right, amen. Y'all, are y'all gonna look at me sideways? Look at it sideways, all that, right? right, 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 right. And, and so, if if you know me, I always say on Father's Day, they ask, well, what you doing for Father's Day? I get to supersize my meal. <laughs> I just, I get to get the big soda. And the big fries, amen? So, so I guess I must have been getting on my wife's nerves with these jokes, as I often get on other folks' nerves with jokes as well. So on last Father's Day, after, you know, we had good time in church, and, you know, Father's Day was wonderful, and, and we going out, and, and, and so we'll go out for dinner, and, and she said, oh, let's go. I'll drive. First red flag. First red flag, first red flag. So, so we we get to going, we get to driving, and she pulls over in in uh, uh, down, down Lima. We're going down Hamner, and she right before we hit the Lima night, she hangs her right. You know, it's a little I think Walgreens right there, and she's driving through the parking lot. And I'm like, wait, well, maybe we can get some gas or something. I see his gas in the car. Then she hangs her left at the McDonald's drive-through. <laughs> I'm like, well, what you doing? Oh, you getting your supersized meal today. <laughs> See, she got me. She got me, you know. She, my, my little comedian over here. Amen. <laughs> but as noted, as the research says, it bears it out, amen? For me, we get the supersized meal, but the mothers pull out all the stops, amen? But, but understand this, the value of fathers is seen differently. Let's just, let's just keep it real. The article goes on to say, while some theorists argue that there is nothing inherent in fatherhood of distinctive importance to children, Others maintain that fathers play a special role. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the amount of research, uh, research devoted to dad's role in parenting is dwarfed by the substantial research devoted to the importance of mothers. See, see uh, Mark Vanderlee of uh, Connection Family Counseling says that, that a recent report on the state of biblical fatherhood revealed that the three most common challenges that Christian fathers face. We're we going somewhere with this. We're going somewhere. The, the first challenge is dads feel like they are failures. Look, look we, we may not say it out loud. But, but dads feel like they are failures. It, it appears that Christian fathers are overwhelmed with the gravity of the role and not feeling equipped. Amen. There, there's a role. Anybody who's been a new dad, when, 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 you, when you hold that little princess or little junior in your hand for the, for the first time, you're, you're in great joy. But, but then the realities start to kick in. I don't know about you, uh, when I was holding those, I was thinking about, ooh, snap, how am I going to pay for college? But you just got here. <laughs> you know, what, what am I going to say? The, the weight of the role starts to weigh on you. The number two challenge is this, dads want to be more intentional. See, see, these fathers struggle with issues like having enough energy after work to be engaged in their kids' life. I'm an old dad. Jeremiah 10, he be, he be wanting to throw the ball, and I be like, man, I want to throw something, but it ain't the ball. 
my, my energy is sap. It's, it's hard to be engaged. And so, so we're, we're worn out. We don't have enough energy to deal with marital problems, setting a good example, and battling all the outside influences. There are so many things calling for our attention and the attention of our families. But we want to be intentional. Listen to this. Sports, music, culture, and friends are all calling for time and energy. And in many instances, these things are calling us away from worship and discipleship. See, these are challenges for for dads trying to be the godly dads that God has called us to be. Fathers are struggling to to balance these demands and be the one in the house that, that sets the limit in. We got all these things pulling for us. It's, it's men of God that they, they want to be in church, but Junior want to play soccer. They, they, they want to be able to serve, but, but they got all these things pressurizing them. Amen? He says the third struggle is this. Dad struggle with disciplining and training. You see, our culture is saturated with material possessions and our families are bombarded with messages designed to create a sense of need in us. It it can be incredibly difficult to set boundaries and expressions of discipline in this context. Listen, me and my wife were telling Jeremiah, can you uh, at least have a conversation with us without telling us what you want? I, I can pull out my phone right now. I got his birthday next month. Long list of the list is changing everything. I'm like, dude, he put on some shoes on the list that's like $300. I said, bruh. <laughs> but, but what he sees out there, in his eyes, everybody wearing Yeezys. In his eyes, everybody got Supreme. In his eyes, everybody, I'm like, no, nah, bruh. No, no. See, see, it's pressure. So these challenges are real for many of us as fathers. And a lot of us do our best to meet the challenges. Look, look we, we, some of us trying. Amen? But, but we got to understand that today, I just want to spend some time in God's word as we focus on the subject of father's blessing. A father's blessing. Amen? The power and the privilege of fatherhood. See, see, what, even with the challenges we face, even with the difficulties, even when we are uh, uh, supersizing and not getting the big ribeye, amen, there is still some things we we trying to do. It's power and, and privilege in, in, in being a father, amen? Amen. Uh, uh, Deidre read earlier Ephesians 6 and 4, and that's going to be our focus scripture this morning, and it is this. Fathers, do not provoke your children uh, to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Listen, listen, uh, uh, ladies, this is not just uh, for daddies. Don't check out on me. I need you to really pay attention, amen, to, to what God is saying to the fathers. Listen, in your, in your feelings, this is one of the greatest blessings for a man is to be a father. Don't, don't, don't miss that. That's one of the greatest blessings in life to be entrusted to with the care and responsibility of another human being, to be a father. However, one of the greatest burdens a man will ever carry is the responsibility of fatherhood. It, it, it's a weight. It's a weight. Amen. And so, so when we look at that, we're going to look at a, a few things. And the first thing when we talk about this is fathers proceed with caution. Fathers proceed with caution. Fathers are to be careful not to provoke or exasperate their children. Now, that word exasperate mess with me a little bit. Amen. We'll, we'll talk about that. That, that first part of Ephesians 6 and 4 tells us, don't provoke your children to anger. Man, that's, that's daddy 101. What you mean? Yeah, what you mean not, not provoke them uh, to anger? Amen? Do it, but listen to Colossians 3.21 that echoes the same thing. It says, fathers, do not exasperate your children so they won't become discouraged. 
See, when we look at this term provoke, some of us, we know what provocation is, amen? But exasperate also means, it means this, to excite to anger or displeasure in, to provoke, to tease, to annoy or to vex. I, I believe that Warren Wiersbe uh, gives us a better picture of what it means when he's talking about not provoking our children. He says this, fathers provoke their children and discourage them by saying one thing and doing another. Yeah, we, we've seen that before, right? By, by always blaming and never praising. It, it's some of us, we always heard the, uh, uh, the, the, the failure speeches, but we never got the pom-poms and the cheers. Uh, listen, we, we remember that, that dad said he was coming to the game, but he never showed up. That we, we remember coming off the field and, and, and you scored the touchdowns, but, but don't, nobody ever gave you a, a pat on the back for that. All they talked about is that you, you know you did that wrong. But you're like, I, 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 su I succeeded. I, I scored, but you could have did it this way. Amen. He, he talks about this, that, that by, by being inconsistent and unfair in discipline. See, some of us, we don't even know what's the line for right and wrong. If pops come in the house with the wrong, with the, with the wrong attitude, amen, I get punished for something I never got punished for before. And see, not only that, by, by showing favoritism, amen, we, we know there's favoritism in, in the house, amen, by making promises and not keeping them and by making light of problems that to the children are very important. I had to learn this lesson that, that, listen, if your child comes to you and shares something to you, it may be important to them. Please don't undermine or diminish their thoughts. Listen, because some of us, come on now, we, you know, that's stupid. Right? Come on now. We, we, I know you heard it or you, you've done it. Our child comes to them, something with, that's important to them, and we, we tell them that, that, that's stupid. You know, we, we have to be careful because those words are loaded. It may be stupid to you, but don't say it. Amen. We, we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We have to understand, he says, that this, that to children, we got to make sure that they understand that they are important to us. So, so caution, Dad, watch what you say. It's things that I can guarantee you, it's folks in here that remember what fathers said to them or mothers said to them that, that hurt them deeply, and they're holding on to it for years right now. They may not be angry about it, but it's etched something in their mind. So we, we got to proceed with caution, fathers. Now, not only that, number two, fathers provide guidance. Pro provide guidance. Get out the back seat and drive the car. See, he says in that B part of Ephesians 6, 4, rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Listen, when you look in, in context, when, when Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he starts off uh, one, and he talks about how, uh, how children are to obey their parents and all those things, and then when you look, he gives only an instruction to the father. This kind of messed me up. I'm like, well, well why, we, why you got to point us out like that? As the one, don't make them angry. And now we, we're carrying the weight of instructing them, providing guidance for them. See, fathers are responsible for training their children in life and the word of God. That, that's our responsibility. Training includes discipline and instruction. It includes discipline and instruction. Listen, Proverbs 22, 6, we're going to walk through some of these wisdom verses. It says, teach a youth about the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. We talk about raising our children in the way that they should go. Understand this, and pro Proverbs are not promises. Because I know I'm out here, we quote it all the time. Proverbs are not promises. 
It, it'll tell you, if you read Proverbs, it'll tell you off the bat, these are wisdom sayings. If you practice these things, amen, they, they're more than likely your, your child would be raised up. Because some of us are like, we, I know some kids that was raised up and their parents were, were doing the right thing and they it still end up sideways. Listen, we are to, we're responsible for the raising. We're not responsible if they don't take. You know, have you ever seen a family where you got five out of five out of six? They, you know, they doing well, and then we got the look, the black sheep. You like he raised in the same house, raised with the same parents. You ask the siblings, they're like, "Mom and them loved them just like." Well, I don't know why. Why Junior always kicking up dust? I don't, I don't know why Mom and them always spending bail money on, on on for him, because you can raise them up. This is not a promise. This is a wise saying that we should put in to practice. Raise them up. It's our desire. We pray for them. We provide for them, and we give instruction, but we got to raise them up. The, that, then the prayer is that they won't depart. Then Proverbs 19, 18, I love this. Discipline your son while there's hope. Don't be intent on killing them. I love, I love the word of God. Amen. Because... <laughs> All right. hey, so some of us want to, you know, we can become homicidal. Our kids will push us there sometime, amen? But, but he says that we are to discipline them. We're responsible for making sure that we, we take care of them, that we hold them accountable. When we talk about discipline, listen, the word will tell you. What, one day, uh, uh, Jeremiah was a little upset. I'll be telling y'all all our stuff, but we can do that because, you know, we want y'all to know we real people too, amen, that that that. He, he was mad. He was in trouble. And he said something. He was about to catch a beat down. And he talked about, I'm going I'm to call the police. It's like, call, call the police. I'm going to give you a real reason to call the police. They're going to be sending some detectives up in here. Amen. They're going to need more than patrol. Amen. You, you go, you go get checked. Amen. A, a, a parent is supposed to check their children. Amen. And listen, I know that we in the timeout time. And from the pulpit on video live stream, I ain't, I'm not advocating that you uh, uh, beat them, but uh, th listen what the scripture tells us. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 24 says this, the one who not use the rod hates his son, but the one who loves him disciplines him diligently. You know, we, we know a lot of us speak King James. We heard it before, right? Spare the rod, uh, the rod spoil the child, amen. We, we, we got to understand that discipline has its proper place. It, it has its proper place. But listen, proper discipline is an act of love and is not primarily to punish. I understand it's, it's an act of love, but I, I mean, I, I really, I, I struggled as a kid when, when parents, when you hear this speech, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. No, my butt is on fire from this belt, and you don't look like you in any kind of pain. Amen. But, but ultimately, when we look at the scripture, the Bible tells us that discipline is an act of love. The Bible tells us that, that those that the Lord loves, he what? Chastised those that belong to him. Listen, uh, um, if you belong to, to, to a parent, if you belong to me, I'm responsible to discipline you. H have, you uh, have you been in a store lately? And uh, you see the little children just, I mean, wilding out, running under, in, under the clothes and treating the stuff like it's a jungle gym. And, and some of us, we could barely hold our tongue. We'd be like, oh, boy, if, woo, yeah, tag me in, tag me in, amen. I'll take care of, tag me in. <laughs> you need to discipline your child. 
this is probably about 10 years ago, we were, we were at uh, Disneyland or uh, somewhere, and we were standing in line. This, this mother was having some trouble with her child. She was holding, them, uh, holding her in the arms, and the next thing we know her was pack. So we're thinking, well, maybe it's the, the, the mother is, is disciplined. No, that baby, that, that ain't really a baby, a toddler, then slap her mama. And, and mother was like, oh, babe, please don't do that. That's, that's, you don't do that to mother. You don't hit mom. Amen. I, we'd have been out in cuffs. Because it's our responsibility to discipline our child. Listen, listen, if you don't discipline them, if they, if they wilding out on you, don't, don't be surprised when they're talking about uh, bail is $100,000. What they was doing? They was just acting a fool. It's our responsibility. It is an act of love. If you love your child, you're going to hold them accountable. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with, with having a, a, a friendly relationship with your child. But you need to understand that as a father... I'm your father. As mom, I'm your mother. Amen. You know, when you get a little older, you you may think that, you know, that, 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 oh, mom is my friend. No, you act a fool. You're going to find out and remember that there's a fine line. Because I love you, I got to hold you accountable. Because I love you, I can't let you go to this party. Because I love you, I can't let you drive the car after you did, uh, uh, broke the rules. Because I love you, I need that cell phone. Because I love you, uh, uh, bring in that, that, that PS4 and let me put that thing up, amen. Because I love you. Because if you act like this when you get a job, if you act like this when you out there on your own in college, if you act like this when, when you are out there, there and I can't see you, I know trouble coming. It's an act of love. And see, see, it's, it's, it's an act of love, not primarily to punish. Punish is part of it. Listen, the belt is meant to sting. Amen. When, when God disciplines us, we're like, oh, Lord, why are you, why are you doing this? Because I need to get your attention. It, it's meant, but listen, some punishment needs to be painful. Uh, listen, have you ever had a child when, when the spanking didn't work no more? They, they, you, you break out the belt and, and they looking like, mm, that's all you got? <laughs> then, we, then we move from the realm of love to the realm of rage. Amen? But, but punishment does have a place. But it's meant to correct now, amen, it's meant to correct. That's what it's for, to bring our, 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 uh, the, that children's behavior into line with what was right. That's what discipline is for. It's out of love, and it's to correct behavior. Failing to provide discipline and instruction hurts the child and undermines the relationship. And see, you, you may think that, you oh, I've, I've never touched my child. They're my best friend, and I, I, I'm able to give them everything that they want. And, and so I, I couldn't get it, get it myself, so I give them everything. No, you're hurting your child ultimately because then they step into life thinking that things are that way. I share with you, I believe, on Mother's Day about uh, we used to talk about helicopter parents, and then I learned the concept of snowplow parents. And what I learned is, is that snowplow parents are the parents that's always clearing everything for their kids. So you, you clearing all the obstacles so they never know what it is to struggle. Listen, some children need to know when you go to the bank and the balance is zero. Some, some children need to know that when, when somebody acting crazy with you on the campus, you need to stand up for yourself. See, see we can't uh, make the role easy for them in everything. They need to feel some pain. Because as they grow, then they're going to understand, they're going to learn that life don't always love you. People don't always have your best interests. The world is evil, amen? But we have to, it's our responsibility to prepare them for that. And if we take away all the obstacles, then they will be unprepared. 
It hurts the child. It undermines the relationship because then they start to think, oh, mommy is my best friend. No, then when you try to check them, they're like, why are you weak friends? No. You have to understand that we are to provide discipline and instruction for our children and do it in a way that honors God. Listen, the next thing is not only do we need to make sure that we provide guidance, that's important. That's our responsibility to help give them direction, to help give them a correction, to, to, to train them in the way that they should go. Listen, training means that you have to pour into them what's been poured into you. A good teacher is a trained teacher. And so as parents, we got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to learn how to be good parents so that we can train up our children. The Bible says train them up in the way that they should go. If you don't know the way, how are you going to help them? Uh, see, see, we have to remain in God's word. We got to remain. It's time I'm, I'm praying, Lord, help me. I was going through this, and I, and I, and I shared it with thee, this, 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 this time when I was really frustrated with Jeremiah. I was wondering, why he make me so mad? You know, I ain't had no anger issues in a long time. I used to have them when I was young. That dude was resurrecting them. I was like, we gonna, I'm going to have to. I'm going to square up with this 10-year-old. and Hey, man. I mean, one time I popped him in the chest. I thought I might have cracked his sternum. <laughs> he understood me, but I was like, oh, Lord, if he go to school. I'm past the statute of limitations. I'm good. Hey, Amen. Anyway. <laughs> but, but, but I needed to go to my father. And talk to him, Lord, show me what's going on with me. Show me how, how to be angry, but yet not sin. Show me how to, how to understand what's going on with my son so that I can encourage him, so that I can show him the love you show me, that I can show him the forgiveness you show me, that I might be able to show him the mercy you show me, that I might be able to show him the grace that you show me. But you only get can only give what you get. Amen. Lastly, fathers, we need to promote encouragement. We need to promote encouragement. I remember I was talking to Sunday on, on Tuesday, and we were saying that, listen, we, we need less booze and more cheers. You, you know, you know, folk, it's some people that's always, it's always negative. Amen. We, we focus on the negative. We, we need more cheers than booze. Listen, when your child fail, fails, they, they know they failed. And you don't need to compound that. Amen. I'm not saying that you don't ignore it. You try to help them in, in rec to recognize it. But you need to, for when they, if they get one question right, uh, folk, hey, you know what? You sure did get a whole lot wrong. But listen, Junior, you really had this one down. Amen. How can we help you to do like this? On the rest of them, you did excellent, amen. We and listen, I'm not talking about being that uh, in in that uh, denial kind of phase, like when Jeremiah first uh, started playing uh, uh, t-ball or whatever, and they were talking about they didn't keep score. I, I almost had a problem. I'm like, what you mean they don't keep score? How you know who won? <laughs> we want all the children to feel positive about themselves, amen. No, if your little junior ain't better than my little junior, hey, man, if we call that winning. I need, we, we need that. No, we, we keep score, hey, amen, but, but, but we need to encourage them. Hey, amen, y'all pray for me, pray for me, hey, amen. Listen, Hebrews 3.13 says this, but encourage each other daily. Why it is still called today? So that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. We need to encourage our children daily. Build them up. I mean, listen, we know that as, listen, I was a bad little kid. Hey, hey man, I was a bad little kid. I needed encouragement. And this is interesting. I thought that I was never encouraged. But when I start to look at things in retrospect, 
I had those who encouraged me, who spoke life to me. As parents, we should be the ones speaking life to our children before somebody else speak life. Now, listen, I, 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 don't, I understand the village concept, and I want the village concept, but we should be the primary cheerleaders for our kids. Listen, often, often when graduation time comes, comes along, you know, in the African-American community, when Lil Junior get his report card, hey amen, we, we got horns and whistles and we screaming and hollering. And, and some cultures can't, can't understand that. We, don't, we want everybody to be quiet because, you know, some people don't, don't have people cheering for them. We're like, no, you don't know what it took to get the little kid to graduation. <laughs> Amen. You you don't know. That's the first one ever in the family to, to, to get to, to high school and be successful. You don't, you don't know what it's like. We want them to know that we are proud of them. We want them to know that we are encouraging them. It's nothing like when you in a crowded room and your child hears their family and screaming across the way and they look and go, I know my people here. Amen. I know my folk here. We, we are to promote encouragement. Romans 15, 5 and 6 says this, Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement allow you to live in harmony with one another according to the command of Christ so that you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with a, a united mind and voice. Listen, we are to encourage, and as we encourage, we're actually giving praise to God. Because if you understand anything about being a parent, about being a father, it's only by God's strength. Amen. We, uh, me and V were talking, and, you know, when we remember when, when our girls were little and we were thinking about how they're going to get to college, how they're going to make it through. Amen. And, and, and so we know that it was not because of what we did, but what God has done. Amen. We, we got to remember when you're cheering and when you're encouraging, you're encouraging them knowing that it's God that's working in and through their lives. Amen. Listen, when we talk about the power and the privilege of fatherhood, it is a weighty responsibility. But see, we get our power from Jesus Christ himself. The Bible tells us that our children are entrusted to us. They don't belong to us. We're stewards and managers. And because God has entrusted us with our children, he's given us the power to raise them up to know him. See, it is the power, the privilege of fatherhood that God would even choose you. See, some of us, we, we like some of the challenges, we feel ill-equipped, but you got chosen. It was not by accident that you, you became a father. It may have been an accidental night, but it. Hey man, I wish we could all say it was, you know. Wait a minute, where we at? We, we, in, the, we in the reality world, right? Amen. But, but understand this, that, that just because you may not have intended it, you may not have purposed it, that God purposed it, amen, and he gave you the privilege See, that's why it's dangerous, dads. If you don't take care of the, the child that God gave you, it's dangerous because not only are you shirking your responsibility to that child, shirking your responsibility to her, 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 her mother or his mother, but you're shirking your responsibility to God. See, we, we got to understand it's, it's power and it's a privilege. So fathers, proceed with caution. Be careful. It, it, it is, it's children right now can't stand their father. Maybe on a deeper level, they may love their father, but they can't stand him because of some things that they, they promised them, but they, they didn't show up. I remember I was watching a, uh, this, this docudrama on Roxanne Shante. Y'all, y'all know, some of y'all know Roxanne Shante. Amen. You won't admit it. Amen. Y'all remember the whole Roxanne, Roxanne, Roxanne Shante was one of them response songs. Amen. I just, I got to give you what comes to my head. Amen. And so in the docudrama, her father had promised his children, like he had done many times, that he was going to come and pick them up, take them out, have some dinner and some ice cream. And, and the scene is they came outside. They were dressed in there, dressed up, sitting 
on a, on a bench outside the projects waiting for their dad who never came. And it broke their hearts. And, 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 and the thing was, and they said, you made a promise, but you didn't keep your promise. We got to be careful because that develops anger. That develops resentment. That develops brokenness. And sometimes we wonder why our kids are acting a certain way. It's because you did some things, you said some things, and you didn't come through. They may not know how to verbalize it, but you got to understand, if you say something to them, you got to do your best to follow through. And listen, if you can't follow through, you need to have a conversation with your child as to why you did not. Proceed with caution. Provide guidance. Fathers, you got to, you are responsible for the instruction and the discipline of your children. Now, now, how you agree with, with mom with that, that's a whole nother thing. But you are the primary one responsible. God is going to hold you accountable if you don't instruct your child. A ask yourself, Dad, have you ever prayed with your child? Have you ever spent time sharing with them what, what God has, has shown you through his word? These, these are things that we must do if we're trying to do it right, and it's never too late to try to get it right. Then, fathers, we're to promote encouragement. We're to be the biggest cheerleaders. That's the only time I advocate men having pom-poms. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I still might talk about you, but it's the only time. Let me leave you with this. Listen, fathers, if you're facing some of the challenges that we talked about, uh, Mark Vanderlee suggests some great biblical ideas that may help us. Amen. I don't know about you. I need all the help I can get. Amen. And I know, I know every woman like, please help the daddies. Please help the daddies. Amen. Listen, the, the first thing he says is that you got to admit your mistakes and ask for forgiveness frequently. Don't be afraid to tell your child you made a mistake. I know parents like, I ain't never admitting no mistake to your child. No, that, that's part of reality. You got to be able to admit your mistakes and ask for forgiveness frequently. It's times when we have asked our children, forgive us. You know, we, we, we didn't do A, B, or C. We did it the wrong way. Please forgive us. You know, mommy and daddy are not perfect. Amen? It, uh, number two, stop trying to be God to your children. Instead, reflect his character. You're you not, your, you not your child's Holy Spirit. Amen? Which we want to do is reflect our, our relationship with God to our children. We want to reflect his grace, reflect his love, reflect his mercy. The next one is this. Stop trying to compare yourself to the perfect dads around you. They're a mirage. Ain't no perfect dads. You know, we, we look at somehow, oh, I wish I could be like them. No, be like you. Be what God called you to do. Amen. There's some good examples of fathers, but ain't no daddy perfect. The greatest thing we could do is uh, for some fathers and even some mothers is to be transparent with those other mothers and fathers we know that are struggling. Amen. Amen. They, they think we got it all, all together. Ooh, I, we, wa we want to be just like you. No, you don't. If you, if you know, I almost caught a case this morning. What you? No, you don't want to be like me. They're a mirage. And then the next one is, I, I love this. He says, learn how to say no. My wife's, one of her favorite statements is, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> you know, kids won't know what explanations, all that, amen. Sometimes explanations are, are good, but no, no. Amen. Some kids, we just, it, good parenting sometimes is just saying no, no. And, and then he says this, shelve, I really love this, shelve the non-family centric hobbies when the kids are young. He talks about some of us, we got hobbies that consume our time and we're not spending time with our children. You know, we, we on the links more than we are at Junior's uh, 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 programs. We, you know, mama there, head about to explode, changing diapers and, you know, and, 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 and feeding the child. And we like, you know, I got bowling league Monday through Thursday 
four to eight every week. Come on now, leave those hobbies for later. You need to invest some time with your child. Amen? Amen. Amen. In this, almost done. Keep at it and stop checking daily results. If you check daily, sometimes you just it wear you out because you don't seem like you're making no progress. Amen? But you got to stay at it. Listen, parents, we didn't get it right. Stay at it. You know you may have failed before, stay at it. You may have a broken relationship with your child, keep trying to fix it. it listen, as long as there's breath in your body and we have a God in heaven, there's an opportunity to change that relationship. But we got to keep at it. Don't give up. And then he says this, get with other guys. Listen, uh, men, we need each other. We are, we are loners by nature. Under, understand this, we, we can be complete and have contentment with us in a remote, us in a fishing pole. Amen. We, we, I'm, I'm just telling you, it's, it's times, yeah, now we, you know, it, it ain't like that all the time. But we are, we are loners by nature, but we need other brothers. I need you to share what's going on with you. I need you to be able to, to talk to and to share with. We got to have a circle of brothers that we, are, that we connect with. Get with other guys. And lastly, take advantage of great Christian uh, resources that are available to us. There's all kind of tools out there that, we, that can help us to be better fathers and better men. Us men, as a men's ministry, we've gone through Act Like Men, learning what the Scripture tells us to, how to be good kingdom men. Then we went through kingdom men to learn how to be those men that God called us to be, to be the kingdom fathers, the kingdom husbands that God called us to be. And now we're going through this uh, study called Sleeping Giants, recognizing that the power that we have when we wake up as men of God to be able to help uh, the church move forward, to touch communities, to touch our families. Uh, Marty sang the song. And the praise team sang the song, you're a good, good father. As earthly fathers, we want that to be a refrain for us, that we're good fathers. And we can be good fathers as we proceed with caution, provide guidance, and promote encouragement. We praise God for the power and privilege of fatherhood. Amen? Give God a hand of praise.